Bio-Rad Electrophoresis Apparatus, $70. Twelve percent SDS polyacrylamide resolving gel, four dollars. Here we go. Four percent SDS stacking gel, four dollars. Protein sample, fifteen dollars. Understanding the process of SDS page. Priceless. Some things you can't buy. For everything else, there's a student ID. Hi, I'm Judy. And I'm Nelson. And, and this is Demystifying SDS Page. Sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or SDS page is a common tool used by biochemists to discover the molecular weights of proteins in a protein sample. The technique separates the different proteins in a sample by their sizes. In the procedure, the sample to be analyzed is first mixed with the detergent SDS. SDS binds to all proteins and breaks up all weak bonds, smoothing them out so that they exist in long rope-like chains. SDS binds 1.4 grams per gram of protein, and each bound SDS has one negative charge. This gives all the polypeptides in the sample roughly the same charge to mass ratio. The solution is then placed on top of the polyacrylamide gel submerged in trist buffer. An electric field is applied to the gel, causing the negatively charged proteins to migrate down the gel. What results is a kind of protein race. Depending on their size, each protein will move differently through the gel. Small proteins move the fastest, while larger ones will have more difficulty. After a set amount of time, usually a few hours, the proteins will have differentially migrated, with the smaller proteins traveling farther through the gel, while the larger ones will have remained closer to the point of origin. Thus, proteins may be separated roughly according to size, and therefore molecular weight. Hey Judy, how about we make ourselves look stupid in front of these intellectuals? Let's make an analogy. The polypeptides running through the polyacrylamide gel matrix are very much like people running through a forest with big sticks. Man, my protein's kind of small. <laughs> yeah, it is. The larger the stick, the harder it is to run through the forest. With a simple attractive force, the race begins. It looks like Nelson wins because he has a smaller stick. Very much like what happens in the gel. The smaller the polypeptide, the faster it can run through all of the obstacles. But wait, what was that whole stacking gel thing our lab person put in the experiment? What does that have to do with anything? Stacking occurs in the part of the gel that has larger pores, so that the gel matrix does not retard the migration during the focusing or stacking event. The purpose of this is to stack the different proteins in a tight band before they enter the main part, the resolving gel. To help this process, chloride ions from the buffer separate in the presence of the electric field, creating a cloud around the proteins, in a sense confusing them so that they don't react to the pull of the electric field all of a sudden. Because the chloride ions travel in the direction of the current without any inhibition from the gel matrix, they clear out relatively fast, leaving the proteins to move freely. But the clouds disappear at the starting tip first, allowing the proteins further behind to get a running start. This accounts for stacking.
Hey, Nelson. Hey, Nelson. Small stick you got there. Yours isn't any bigger. It's kind of crowded in here, Judy. It sure is. Is that a fly? I hate flies. Oh, no. Those pesky flies always want to get to the cake. Put the cake out and flies appear. In this analogy, the flies represent the appearance of chloride ions from the buffer solution in our SDS page experiment. In a sense, the chloride ions confuse the proteins, but as the chloride clears away, the proteins which are left behind now move faster and can catch up to their identicals. Once the wave of chloride ions are gone, the proteins have a chance to go through the stacking gel without much inhibition. When the proteins reach the main part of the gel, the race begins and the smaller proteins always win. Before we go, there's one last important concept to consider. This involves the truss glycine buffer which is placed above the stacking gel. When the voltage is turned on, glycine acts like the chloride ions in the gel and flows in the direction of the chocolate cake. But when it hits the stacking gel, it stops because the pH neutralizes the net negative charge on glycine. Because of this neutralization effect, the glycine molecules stop at the stacking gel and allow the chloride ions to move as a wall rather than having a continuous flow. Good night, everybody! Good night!